Joining me now is Dr. Robert Wiley, the Assistant Professor of Political Science and the Director of Political Economy Program of the Ashbrook Center at Ashland University. He teaches courses in political economy, history, and political philosophy. Thank you for appearing on our political forum for the Election 20 telecast, Dr. Wiley. Thanks for having me on tonight. It's oh, a it's pleasure a pleasure to be here. Oh, it's, oh, it's a two-way pleasure. All right. Dr. Wiley, with the current climate of this election in the United States, what are the major issues this election, and how have the candidates adapted to these issues? Certainly, this isn't the election that either candidate thought that they would be running in. Um, before March, Donald Trump thought he'd be, had a roaring economy. He thought there'd be a record low jobless claims and that he could be the job president. Then came the novel coronavirus disease in April. Then came the killing of George Floyd on the 25th of May. And all of a sudden, this election, which looked like it was going to be one thing, um, maybe about immigration, maybe about the impeachment. Remember that this president was impeached? Maybe we've forgotten already. <laughs> the issues are totally different. And now it's about how do we reopen the economy, right? Now it's about these, these pleas for racial justice around the country. And, and neither candidate expected that. And we see both candidates trying to pivot and um, speak to issues that they didn't realize they'd have to be speaking towards, um, whether in the Democratic primary or, or before April. How do you think each candidate and their parties have handled this uh, shift in narrative of what they were focusing on? So you talked, uh, Donald Trump was, his main thing was economy, and now he's had to shift his whole uh, form, same as the uh, Democratic Party and Joe Biden. Uh, their platform has totally shifted, and both are trying to uh, really fit, fit a, uh, what's the word, what am I looking for? They're trying to tailor right. their, um, their messages to their a totally new situation. To the, yes. How, how do you think both parties have handled this so far? One of the things that's difficult is that the way people in urban communities versus rural communities, the way people in some regions of the country versus others have experienced, for example, the pandemic is totally different. And it's hard to know what will play in one side, one part of the country is going to play in another part of the country. It took Donald Trump a long time to wear a mask. The first time I think we saw him in the mask was at Walter Reed Medical Center. But that's politics, right? He refuses to wear them at the rally every time you see Joe Biden, right? in a mask. Um, so I think there are uh, even decisions that are that minute, right, are decisions that they have to make. And they, they weren't thinking about that. Um, and sometimes I think um, the president doesn't always follow his instincts. I think he wanted a ban on China travel originally. People thought that would be excessive. And then we got that anyway. So the situation's changing. Many things about the pandemic still at this point are unknown. To evolving, and they're tailoring their message on even small things about it. Um, and it's interesting because they're not, they're not young men, right? This is, this is a gerontocratic election. This is the rule of older people. Um, and how, how you campaign, do you even make campaign stops? That's a big thing for the Biden campaign. Uh, haven't seen them have the big rallies that Trump has. Um, so it's very different you know, in how they campaign. Yeah, so each party has had their own way of operating under these new circumstances. Mm -hmm. And it's unique. It's unique, uh, unlike any other election that we've had in the last couple yeah, of years or it so. It feels different. It, it feels, feels different. like a different election. Um, you know, uh, there's, there's a thought that um, incumbent presidents have an advantage and will always win. There's a thought that debates don't really matter, right? I think this election is quite different, both because of the personality of Donald Trump that is so divisive, so polarizing. People love him that have never voted before. People put signs in their yard where you never saw signs before. And, and then people hate him, right? So uh, massive personality. People are tuning into politics in a different way, and different people are tuning into politics. And it's hard to know for the pollsters who's going to vote. And, and this election can go, you know, at this point. You know, we're down to the wire. And it's, still don't know which way it's going to go. Exactly. And we talked um, before we came on set about the incumbency and how you spoke how Donald Trump is unlike any incumbent since 1992. Every, since 1992, they've, incumbents have always won. Donald Trump, you said, mm -hmm. is unlike any incumbent. Why, is, why do you feel that he's unlike any other incumbent? Yeah, so we usually think that the incumbent uh, has the platform of the presidency of the United States. Um, the incumbent gets a lot of attention because he is the president. Uh, he said he has the dignity of the office. Donald Trump, even in the White House, has positioned himself as an outsider. 
um, uh, a, a, a neighbor has a flag that uh, I'll battleize it, but it says Trump 2020, no more BS, which is an okay. odd thing for yeah. an incumbent. Wait, I, no more? What, what, what about the last four years? Right? That implies that but he's, a, BS. he's an outsider. He's still fighting the establishment. He's maybe fighting against people that he's appointed in his own executive branch. And he, unlike other incumbents, he's not running on his record or his policies. He got a major tax cut that we've forgotten about at the very beginning of his term, but there aren't these policies that he can run on and say, here's my record for four years, because at the very end of that four-year term or near it, these events that we talked about earlier um, surrounding the, after the murder of George, or the killing of George Floyd, after the, uh, after the coronavirus, right, this has totally changed the election, and doesn't let him point to that record. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So incumbents usually have that advantage, but it's hard to see how a president that still carries himself as an insurgent and is dealing with a totally new situation, right, how he can present himself even as the incumbent. Exactly. In this new world we're living in all of a sudden. It's, it's new for everyone. It's new for <laughs> politics. It's new for professors. It's yeah, new for indeed. students. It's, uh, it's been a whirlwind, yeah, to indeed. say the least. Indeed. Indeed. And it's all political. It's all political. Dr. Wiley, what is at stake for each party going into this election? We have all these things going on in the world. Uh, let's talk about the Democratic Party. What is at stake for the Democratic Party and Joe Biden? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, a lot of political scientists will tell you that our two major parties are actually different kinds of institutions. Um, and traditionally, we understand the Republican Party as a cohesive, ideas-driven party. Free markets, Ronald Reagan, these are our ideas, and these are the ideas we, we present to Americans. Whereas the Democratic Party is less agreed upon a single set of ideas that are fairly coherent, but they're a coalition of different groups and it's coalitional politics. This is either totally fading or seeming to be reversed now because you have elected, again, an insurgent Republican that doesn't seem to fit those ideas. Didn't exactly fit the bill exactly. of the Tariffs, Republican uh, Party. Um, uh, immigration restrictions, maybe less so, but the, but the questioning of free trade, questioning of free trade deals um, sort of puts him at a distance from the party. He's trying to win, he's trying to win a sort of working class blue collar vote they did deliver him a razor-thin victory, but they won him the White House in Pennsylvania, in Michigan, um, states like Ohio, too. Um, and so that, it sort of resembles maybe Richard Nixon more than the Republican president since Reagan. But meanwhile, the Democratic Party, I don't think Joe Biden really represents, but there's, there's sort of new progressive ideas, um, and they're becoming more the party of ideas. I'm not sure Joe Biden embodies them. He's sort of maybe still a sort of a safe choice for a lot of voters. Uh, who aren't quite on board with um, uh, the progressive left, the activist left, um, and its, its slogans and ideas. So we see the parties maybe changing positions, the Republicans becoming more coalitional and divided. You get the you know, social conservatives, you'll get Amy Coney Barrett, right? you'll get the Coney Barrett nomination to the court. Um, business Republicans, you'll get this, right? Whereas, the de and, and they're becoming more, whereas the Democrats, these ideas are becoming more important in their party. Um, so, th th so something's at stake. If, if, if Donald Trump wins this election, the Republican Party keeps going in that direction. If, if Joe Biden wins the election, um, we'll see how long uh, um, he, uh, we'll, we'll see how long he, he governs and he lives, and we'll see if we have a Harris administration. You'll remember Kamala Harris's gaffe, calling it the Harris administration mm -hmm. already. Will these sort of Democratic politicians who have taken on board progressive ideas more than Biden will they come up? Right, we'll see that. But the parties are switching in a way that's, and that's one of the, another odd thing about this election, in addition to the external events that, that are new. Yeah, the, with all, all things considered, things could very sh shift dramatically for each party, yeah. given who wins. Yeah, they and, could, and how they, they win. Uh, it's not outside the realm of possibility that Joe Biden will win Texas. That's a huge prize, right? Texas becoming a purple state, maybe becoming a blue state, Latino, Hispanic immigration. That changes the electoral map. Um, there's some shot, on the other hand, that Donald Trump is, is, is campaigning in Minnesota, a state Republicans haven't won since 1972. So throughout this campaign, both sides think they can win big. And some of these margins in states, Florida, Pennsylvania, razor thin, could come down to a couple hundred votes. Could come down to a couple hundred votes, and it is, come down a, to tonight. A, it is something that we have never experienced before, all these different... Um, 
things that these little, little uh, knuckleballs that they've been throwing at Indeed. us in this political climate nowadays. Well, Dr. Wiley, thank you so much for coming on our program. Uh, thank you for joining me tonight. It's been a pleasure. Now let's go back to the election 20 update set.